Welcome to this introduction to Generative Adversarial Networks. With the Gen, you can have a dataset of images and train it to generate images which look like they come from the given dataset. So for example, in this video, I will show a Gen which is supposed to generate images which look like digits from the MNIST handwritten digit dataset. The idea of Gens was first proposed by Ian Goodfellow in 2014 and a lot of progress has been made ever since. A gen is a powerful tool and can produce impressive results if it is constructed the right way. Before I get into how gens work, I just want to mention that a basic understanding of neural networks and gradient descent is recommended. A gen consists of two neural networks. We call the net on the left the generator and the net on the right the discriminator. In a perfect gen, the generator is a net which outputs realistic looking images for some random input seed. But how would you train such a net? To answer that question, let us look at the discriminator first and forget about the generator for a second. The discriminator is a neural net which tries to detect if an image stems from the dataset or not. This is a simple discriminator which tries to differentiate between real images and random noise. It outputs a 1 if the image is real, and otherwise it outputs a 0. Now this won't be that difficult for the discriminator, as the random noise looks very different from the images in the dataset. So let's replace the random noise with a generator. The generator's goal is to trick the discriminator into thinking that an image the generator has generated gets evaluated as real by the discriminator. In other words, the generator tries to maximize the output of the discriminator for generated images. The discriminator, on the other hand, tries to be as good as possible in deciding if an image is real or generated by the generator. This means the discriminator wants to maximize its output for real images and minimize its output for generated images. In the beginning, both nets are terrible at their job, so we need to train them. We want to train these nets simultaneously, as during the training both nets can benefit from the ability of the other net. Let's start with two untrained nets and a set of images we want to train with. Step 1. First we show the discriminator an image from the dataset and give it the label real or 1. We then adjust the discriminator's weights with gradient descent. Step 2. We pass some random seed into the generator for which it will output an image. We show this image to the discriminator and give it the label fake or zero. And again, we can adjust the discriminator's weights with gradient descent. Step three. In this step, we want to train the generator. But how can we do that? Well, we want the generator to generate images that look real to the discriminator. This means we can tell the generator that for an image it has generated, the discriminator should output real or a 1. Like that, we can adjust the weights of the generator with gradient descent, but this time with the goal of maximizing the discriminator's output, as the generator wants to make the discriminator believe that the image is real. This works as the error propagates from the discriminator's output all the way back to the input of the generator. Be careful that in this step you freeze the weights of the discriminator and only change the weights of the generator. This is because you want to reduce the loss by improving the generator and not by worsening the discriminator. Now we just need to repeat these three steps and we will hopefully have a generator which creates realistic looking images and a discriminator which is good at differentiating between real and fake images. That shouldn't sound too bad, right? Well, in reality, training gens comes with quite a few challenges and it might be difficult to get the hyperparameters right to get them to work. Also, training gens can take a lot of time. In the following video, I will show how you can implement a simple gen to generate handwritten digits in TensorFlow. If you want to see more videos on machine learning, please consider subscribing and leaving a like.